With Security Today, we're constantly hearing of organizations that have security breaches and privacy breaches. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find devices on our network that were susceptible to these types of attacks before the bad guys got there? Well, that's exactly the case where you would use a vulnerability scan. A vulnerability scan is generally a passive type scan that's looking around for problems that might be configured on your servers or with your application. This isn't quite like a penetration penetration test where you're really trying to break into a system, what you're doing is really getting an overall view of where some openings might be. Later on, you might want to drill down further into that piece. Some vulnerability scanning usually starts with identifying port numbers that might be open to the outside, because that's how the bad guys get in, is finding those openings. So you might want to do a port scan of your servers, a port scan of the devices that are your infrastructure devices, like your routers and your firewalls, just to see how much is there and available for someone to be able to get into and try to figure out a way through those devices. You might also use your vulnerability scan to identify other systems on your network or make sure the systems in place are the ones that you would expect to see. This is a case where you would not only do the testing from inside of your network, but you also want to get the perspective of what the bad guys see. So it makes sense to perform a number of these scans from outside of your network, because that's where the bad guys are going to come from. And now you're going to have the perspective of seeing exactly what a bad guy sees when he tries to get into your network. If you run a vulnerability scan, if you download some of these tools from the internet and you start running them, they're going to provide you with a lot of information. In fact, some of it may be overwhelming. There is a lot of good information in there, but you do have to sort it out afterwards and really do your research and understand exactly what those devices and pieces of software are trying to tell you. That way, you'll be able to tell if a problem identified by the vulnerability scanner is something critical or whether it's something that's more informational. We try to build these vulnerability scanners to look at as much as possible. And what it's really doing is going through a list of signatures and using those signatures to request information from a server and see what kind of response it gets back. Everything is based on these signatures. So if there are new vulnerabilities that are identified out in the world, usually the vulnerability scanner company will create new signatures. So you want to make sure you have the latest signatures before you begin your scanning. You can also go online and do some of this research we mentioned. Go online to the National Vulnerability Database at nvd.nist.gov. Also a good place for vulnerability checks is Microsoft. They have their security updates on the second Tuesday of every month. And each one of those updates has a wealth of information of exactly what that security update entails. You can find that at Microsoft.com in the Microsoft Security Bulletins area. Sometimes a vulnerability scam will pick out something on a server that's unusual. And maybe you don't know exactly what type of vulnerability is associated with what the scanner is finding, but you may want to dig down a little bit deeper. So even if you're not getting an exact match on a particular signature, it's something that's a little more vague or something that you can't quite make out, it makes sense to do a little more research to understand why the scanner is providing you with that feedback. The vulnerability scam results can tell us a lot about what's going on in our environment, especially places where we may have missed some very important opportunities to make the network more secure. Good examples of vulnerability scan can tell you if a device has no firewall configured, if there's no antivirus configured or installed on a particular device, if it has no anti-spyware, or if the signatures are not up to date. These vulnerability scans can log on and look at the machines in your environment. So they're able to give you a lot of detail about what's configured on those machines. You can also find misconfigurations this way. There may be a device that has shared a section of its hard drive, and the share is completely wide open, no password whatsoever. That's a very common configuration error, but a vulnerability scan can tell you exactly all of the open shares that it finds. There's also a concern with leaving guest account access turned on. That might provide the bad guy with just a little more room to get into a system and find out information that they need. The vulnerability scan can also inform you when there is a real vulnerability problem. Maybe you have a Microsoft server that everyone forgot about, nobody patched it, and now it's susceptible to a very critical exploit. Well, this is a great opportunity to have your vulnerability scan identify all of the devices that do not have the proper patch and they're not up to date. If you're looking around and trying to find all of those places where someone could get into your organization and create a problem, then you're going to want to run a vulnerability scan and learn as much information as possible.